Welcome to another Striper Season update brought to you by West Marine. The big bass are still on the move as we approach next week's new moon. This time of year, they're spread from northern New Jersey to as far north as Maine, so it's definitely a great time to be on the water. Pogies are still abundant in many areas, so the name of the game right now is Big Baits. The on the water crew had an excellent outing this week with Captain Rob Taylor of Newport Sport Fishing Charters with fish up to 40 pounds on live, slow trolled bunker. Big top water baits at dawn are still doing the trick, and after dark, large metal lip swimmers have been the ticket for bigger fish. However, as the sun climbs higher in the sky, the fish can get a little bit picky, which is where this year's Striper Cup lures, the Zorus Pachinko and the Zorus Astri, really shine. In this week's Striper Season Update, Jimmy Fee and legendary lure maker Patrick Sabeel talk about these lures and how to best fish them. So if you've signed up for the Striper Cup or you're thinking about signing up for the Striper Cup, in your sign-up package you're going to get one of these Zorus lures. And these are part of a company called A Band of Anglers by Patrick Sabeel. Patrick, thank you for coming up to Cape Cod to visit us. I always love to. Oh, it's great to have you up here. Tell us about a band of anglers. So you started this three years ago now? Yeah, a bit more than three years ago indeed. And uh, I started with my own brand. So Oceanborn was the first one to which I added uh, hyperelastics. So Oceanborn being the, the, the brand very much dedicated uh, to saltwater fishing. And then uh, hyperelastics, which is more about soft, long lasting soft plastics. I have Engage, which is the brand that's the closest to what Seville was for those, maybe some of you know the Seville brand. Um, I have also Up and Down, which is a brand purely dedicated to lures that go up and down from teeny lure for ice fishing or bigger lure for I mean, all kinds of things. Uh, I, I added to that the Spooltech brand, which have a very unique patent uh, where we have a concealed leader, stainless steel concealed leader, so you can fish with a, a thin leader and you can fool the bigger stripers. And when you set the hook, the lure goes away from the hook, less risk to lose the fish. And if you have a bluefish, it can chew on a 200 pound wire. And then I knew that brand, Xorus, for a long time because we are a competitor in Europe. And they have brilliant lures, the Xorus lures, and it turned out to be the distribution of a band of anglers in Europe. And I was talking with those guys, Yannick, the owner, is a fantastic guy, great, great angler, and I respect him a lot for all he, what he's done. Actually, the, the, that company is 20 years old this year. And we discussed about that, and I say, Yannick, I know you have the Asturi and the Pachinko. They are key baits in Europe because they are, for the past 10 years, they are the two best-selling topwater lure in saltwater. And that really matters because in Europe, we, the stock of fish is much lower than here. Bad management, really bad management. Um, the, in several countries, including France, government allows for the commercial fishermen to go fishing in February when the European sea bass, which is the cousin of our striped bass here, when they congregate uh, together to, to reproduce, the commercial fishermen catch them in their net, and then they use pressure water to remove the eggs and the sperm. They freeze them, and they sell them in June and July when the price is high. And it's crazy, it's crazy. So all of, for all of those reasons and a few more, the population of fish are low. So the fishing is more difficult because instead of fishing you know, with a school of 200 fish where they can fight each other behind the lure, most of the time you have only one, two, three fish, and it's much more difficult to turn the bite on. And I knew that those two lures, what made their, their strength was to be able to catch lure, to catch fish, sorry, even when fishing is very finicky. And that's why they are very solidly um, implanted there. And that's why when I talk with Yannick, we discuss about why don't we bring this brand and those lures here? Because of course, when the bite will be great, they'll do the job like almost every lure. And when the bite is finicky, we all figure that even here, sometimes, well, it's not that easy. Well, they really help to turn the bite on and that is a big deal. Yeah, and that is one of the cool things about a band of anglers to me is you've fished around the world and you you know what works and to be able to bring lures like this one from Europe to the northeast northeastern US it's uh, you know it's, it's just very this is something that without a band of anglers we may have never heard of these lures or had the opportunity to fish them here yeah and uh, actually uh, Yannick came two years ago fish with a few local guides and he caught plenty of fish so he, he was absolutely sure that yes indeed those will work here as well. There was no reason why they will not, but that's always a, you know, a cool thing to, to be sure that, yes, you have great baits in, at the end of your line. So these are the two best selling topwater lures in Europe, and Patrick's gonna show us how to fish them yep. for our striped bass here on Cape Cod, here okay. in the Northeast. And by the way, they come with those travel hooks, and of course, you just can keep the travel hooks, they do the job beautifully, but we all know, we all know that two travel hooks 
give a, a little bit better hookup ratio, yes, but two weakness of two treble hooks, and that's true for any lure. First weakness is you damage the fish more. For example, maybe the, the tail treble hook goes in the mouth, but then the second treble hook goes in the eye, and well, you damage a fish, you lose a high. That, that happened, we all know that, that does happen. The second thing be, beside that is a treble hook is what? It's only three small hooks put together. So when you catch schoolies or medium-sized fish, eh, no big deal. When you have a big fish, a treble hook, well, always have a bit more risk that if only one of the three or of the six uh, hooks is hooked, well, it's not that wide, you may lose a bit, a bit easily, more easily, a uh, big fish. So by removing the original treble hooks, if you are more you know, conscious and want to take care of your stripers, you can change to single hooks. I mean, actually, we, we find that those VMCs do the job pretty well. You go with the 4-0 for the Asturi 150, which I have here. You go with the 3-0 for the Pachinko 140, who's coming there, and that do the job. You may miss a few more small fish, but on good fish, no difference. Beside of you hook much better, there's a, a wider gap to That's all the big fish, and you damage the fish much, much less when you want to release them. And I have a little secret for you. Those are the two largest size at this moment, the 150 Asturi, the 140 Pachinko. But next year, we're coming with the 180 and the 170. That means about one inch, one inch and a half bigger baits. So I will even fit better the needs for the larger fish. That's special for underwater. Awesome. But that guy... Cast. Well, I got to say, I got a wind in the back too, but even with it, without the wing, that does cast a long way. And it casts pretty well against the wind because it's so well shaped. I see it going from like, like a very tight, you know, crisscrossing pattern. And then when you slow it down, it, it really does have a good yeah. glide to it. Very good glide. When, when you make that twitch and you pause a little bit, that guy can go feet, feet and half. That's why when you're more constant, you don't give enough freedom. So then he goes, you know, 18 inch, 10 inch maybe. But then you make that a little pause and that's why it stops. And sometimes you make a pure stop. I mean, you know that. The striper, sometimes you make a pause and they bite on the pause or they bite. The second it starts moving when again. You stop again. And the other nice thing about this bait too is you hear this. Every time that walks, it's got that nice little, it's kind of one of those low frequency knocks in it which really seems to almost make stripers angry. The Asturi is obviously a pencil bait. So what you can notice about that pencil bait, it's a little bit humpback that matters. More buoyancy right here. And look, the weight here, there's some weight that's above the center of gravity. That truly helps. We have closer hooks than on typical pencil, and that really helps also into the 180 degree or walking the dog action. And literally the position of the curl in the front is the best angle to make a maximum splashing when you do your walking the dog action. So that's why I really like that guy because not only he casts very well, but whether you do a regular walking the dog action or you want to make some slides or you want to have a very short hit and pause, hit and pause, which makes the biggest splash, it works greatly on, tree, on, on the tree situation. And that's why you see that that lure is perfectly tuned. A tiny lure, a lot of action. So I can have a, a constant walking the dog. Many people will, will just do that. We all know that catch fish. And that's okay, it works great like this. Now, I personally like more this, a little bit more irregular, because when I pull on my rod tip and make a teeny pause behind, there's a chance that my lure will go more sideways and make a little bit bigger splash, attracting the stripers a bit more from far away. So what you can see, and the wave, of course, you know, have some impact on that, but you, you can, you really can have a great 180 degree action as long as you just give the right twitch in the rod tip and a little pause behind. And this way, the lure can almost stay on the same spot, make a nice splash and slide, and slide, uh, you know, sideways. And then you do it again, and now, now it splashes here and go that way. And that I find very efficient when the fish are a bit deeper, you know, but when the fish are more kind of, you know, running away, chasing around. That's why I go in a bit more uh, faster retrieve, you know, more uh, steady walking the dog. Patrick, thank you so much for breaking me out of the office for a couple casts, fish or no fish. It's great to get yes. back together. Now we can all travel again and you're going to be coming up again in a month and I know we're going to be uh, getting some fish then, so. We're going to spend the right time 
on the right tides. Exactly. This is Patrick just breezing through, popped in the office. We were able to sneak out for a bit, but it's always good to see an old friend. So always Patrick, good to see you as well. Can't wait to see you again in a month. Do some real fishing. So let's do that. All right, man. Thank you. Thank you.